Psychology A-Levels, Schizophrenia This is part one, classifications and explanations of schizophrenia by Revised Time Vids at YouTube. Clinical characteristics The term schizophrenia originates from the Greek for split mind. Bluer, who first coined the term, wanted to convey the fragmented nature of thinking that occurs in people with schizophrenia. But it is important that you do not confuse it with the quite distinct diagnosis of multiple personality disorder, also known as split personality. It is one of the most common and the best known psychotic disorders. In most countries around the world, the prevalence of schizophrenia is about 1% in a population that's over 18. That is, 1 in 100 people have schizophrenia. Diagnostic criteria for schizophrenia the diagnostic criteria for schizophrenia are very similar in the ICD and the DSM, but the major difference is that the DSM specifies that signs of disturbance must be present for at least six months, while the ICD requires that important symptoms are only present for one month. There are two symptom lists in diagnosing schizophrenia. The first one, symptom list one, requires at least one symptom from the list to be present. Thought echo, insertion, withdrawal or broadcast. Delusions of control, influence or passivity, delusional perceptions. Hallucinatory voices, such as running commentary, discussion of patients or appear to be coming from another part of the body. And finally, persistent delusions that are culturally inappropriate or impossible. Symptom list 2. There should be at least two symptoms from this list to be diagnosed. Persistent hallucinations in any modality, accompanied by half-formed delusions or overvalued ideas. Neologisms, literally meaning new words, which refers to spoken nonsense words, and breaks in the train of thought, which both result in coherence or irrelevant speech. Catatonic behaviour, the debilitating physical effect of schizophrenia, which includes a marked motor abnormality, usually rigidity of the limbs, but can be other negative effects as well. And finally, negative symptoms, cause that because they are harder to treat. These include apathy, paucity of speech and blunting of emotional responses. There are, however, some exclusions. If the patient also has manic or depressive episodes, this must have developed after schizophrenia was developed. Furthermore, the disorder must not be attributable to organic brain disease or alcohol or drug-related intoxication, dependence or withdrawal. Positive and negative symptoms Positive symptoms these include hallucinations, delusions, disorganised speech, etc. They are called positive because they are in addition to the individual's behaviour and they can be treated with antipsychotics. Negative symptoms. These include loss of emotion, interest, pleasure, social withdrawal and the lack of personal welfare and hygiene. These are called negative symptoms because they cannot just be treated with antipsychotics and they need another form of therapy such as cognitive behavioural therapy to get better. The cause of the disorder. It tends to develop in early adult life. Men and women are equally affected. However, the peak onset age in women tends to be 5 to 10 years later than men. This is unexplained. Childhood schizophrenia has been diagnosed, but is very rare. It is an episodic illness which intersperses with periods of normal functioning. The emergence of symptoms usually occurs after a prodromal period of a few weeks or months in which changes in the mood and behaviour are evident to people close to the sufferer, but specific symptoms have not yet appeared. The active phase then follows, lasting one to six months, but can extend to a year. Interepisodic of normal functioning varies between individuals. Better interepisodic functioning is associated with a better prognosis. Recovery there is a general lack of agreement about the outcome of a diagnosis of schizophrenia. It used to be thought of as incurable. However, it is now thought that two-thirds of people diagnosed will make a substantial recovery. However, depression frequently occurs with schizophrenia. And sadly, this leads to 10-15% to of sufferers committing suicide. That concludes the end of this video. Thank you for watching. The next video is issues surrounding classification and diagnosis. Remember, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.